Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. The initial treatment of thyroid cancer is surgery, uh, and that's uh, usually a thyroidectomy, whether it's a partial or a total. Uh, I believe other people have discussed this topic extensively, but the, the initial treatment for thyroid cancer is, is a thyroidectomy. Now, many patients have, uh, thyroid cancer can come back. It can come back locally, meaning where it started in the neck, what we call local recurrence. It can come back in the lymph nodes in the neck, and we call this regional recurrence. But it also can come back in distant sites, and that's what we call distant metastases. Now, the common sites of distant metastases for thyroid cancer Lung is the most common. Liver is another site of uh, recurrence, and also bone metastases. Um, so in trying to manage patients with recurrent thyroid cancer, so we try to determine a few things first. Are we dealing with a local recurrence? Are we dealing with a regional recurrence? Or are we dealing with a distant recurrence? For patients with local and or regional recurrence, meaning those patients where the cancer does come back in the neck or in the thyroid, you often try to manage these patients with surgery if surgery is still possible. So having the surgeon and the endocrinologist be part of that conversation is very important because many of these patients can still do very well with an operation and they would not require any chemotherapy, whether it's tyrosine kinase or other. So uh, it is important to determine uh, as, you, uh, as, uh, as you work up these patients uh, whether that patient still has a surgical option because that should be employed first uh, when, when, when possible. Now, when dealing with patients with metastatic disease, obviously a different set of, of circumstances. Obviously, we try to determine first is the patient still candidate for radioactive iodine? And if the patient is candidate, then that, that is often the first step. But again, what we're trying to uh, focus on today is the management of those patients where you have used radioactive iodine, and now they are radioactive iodine refractory. So in those patients, uh, what we call directed local therapies can play a big role for palliation. For example, someone with a isolated bone metastasis that is causing pain, that patient should be referred for a radiation oncology consultation because radiation therapy is an effective way of managing bone metastases. There are also novel ways of, of, of addressing these isolated uh, metastases, things like radiofrequency ablation, things like cryotherapy, what we call directed local therapies. Those can play a big role in managing thyroid cancer. Obviously, if you're dealing with a patient with widely metastatic disease, then your, your issues are a little bit different because you're not going to be able to use radiation therapy in a patient like that. But we have to know and we have to remember that many patients with thyroid cancer have one or two liver lesions where you could go and do things like surgery or cryotherapy or radiofrequency ablation. And the same, you can do those things on the lungs. You can do those things on bone. So these interventions can, when, when, you, when you're dealing with a limited set of metastases, local directed therapies are important. Now, nobody can define what's the appropriate number. Is it two lesions or three lesions? You have to do this on a case-by-case -case situation. And this is why really having a team that's involved in managing these patients is essential. When you're getting to that stage where you are dealing with metastatic disease, when dealing with recurrent disease, having a team of experts that includes the endocrinologist, that includes the surgeon, the medical oncologist, the radiation oncologist, is essential. And at that stage, it becomes important to start thinking about really having a conversation with that medical oncologist, bringing that person into the conversation, because obviously they deal with, um, they could play the role of the quarterback and try to direct therapies for that patient, because there are a number of therapies that can be used. And we'd like to think in this day and age, we'd like to think of thyroid cancer as really more of a chronic disease, where patients can live many years with metastatic disease, and having the appropriate team that can really select the appropriate therapy at the appropriate time is gonna be key here because we do have many options and we do not wanna use all of these options up front when they are not necessary and we wanna try to stage these approaches and try to go with the more effective or the most needed first and leaving those treatments that could be more systemic for later on. So an important question that one has to deal with is this notion of you know, wait uh, until the patient has more disease or more progressive disease. And, and this comes back to the, to the first question you've asked, or one question that I'm often asked, which is, you know, when do you think is the best time to start treatment? 
Um, this is a very difficult question to answer, and this is a question that we all struggle with in the clinic. Uh, as I mentioned before, many of the patients with thyroid cancer are young, are healthy, uh, have jobs, have kids. Uh, they have absolutely no symptoms. And one of the questions we often have to answer is, when do I need to start treatment on that patient? Because if I'm giving a patient a treatment with a drug, now that patient has no symptoms, is working full time, and I give them drug X, it is possible that quality of life is going to decrease because they're going to have the side effects of that drug. So this is a question that is going to be answered in the future. We need more information to try to determine on the best time. There are situations where you know you need to intervene, where the approach of wait, uh, watch and wait is just not appropriate. Again, patients with what I call rapidly progressive disease. You have a scan three months ago that's now showing you that the cancer has doubled in size. You have new lesions have showed up. So someone who has lung mets now has lung and liver and bone. You know that patient is going to be in trouble very soon. So for that patient, I would not want to wait another two months for the next scan because the scans already have told me this patient has new lesions. He's got now bone lesions, which he did not have before. Now, patients who have disease in what we call critical areas, areas in the neck that are unresectable, where if you know, where, where you know if the cancer continues to grow, this patient is going to have trouble breathing, it's going to have trouble swallowing. So you do want to prevent that. You do want to get to a point where if you have lesions in a critical area, areas, for example, close to the heart, close to the pleura, again, close to the voice box, esophagus, where you know further growth will get the patient in trouble, you would want to consider treatment for that patient when you know that you have active agents. But I might not want to treat the patient who has three long lesions, one or two centimeter in size, that over time are not changing much or are growing by a few millimeters every few months when the patient is completely asymptomatic. So for that patient, I might want to wait. I would want to watch that patient. So this notion of, of really watchful waiting uh, is very difficult to establish. So it's not easy for any one of us, even those of us who deal with thyroid cancer all the time, it's not always easy to determine. And this could go back to the, what I mentioned in the beginning, that it's important to bring that medical oncologist early on to the discussion to bring a team and trying to decide on what is the appropriate time because those decisions are very difficult to make.